So, I'm going to start by addressing you a couple of questions. And I would like you to raise your hand if your answer is yes. Are you with me? Yeah. Great. <laughs> okay, so the first question is, would you test a drug on yourself? And I don't mean a you-know-what kind of drug. I mean a perfectly new medicine that no human has ever tried before. Raise your hand if you would do it. Not seeing so many hands. What about testing the same drug on, her, on your baby? Would you test it on your baby? Raise your hand if you would do it. Okay. Not so many hands. What about an animal? How would you feel about testing a drug on an animal? Okay. Yes. See, many of you still have a problem with that. They are so cute after all. What about a computer? How would you feel about testing a drug on a computer? Raise your hand if you do it. Oh, I see many of you not, don't have a problem with that. And your answer is quite sensible. As I must tell you, no computer has ever overdosed. <laughs> no computer ever had dangerous side effects. No computer ever became addicted. No computer ever forgot to take its tablets. And this is why I, as a biopharmacist, I can proudly say, my computer is on drugs. <laughs> we need new drugs. Humans are still suffering from thousands of diseases that lack a cure, diseases for which current treatments have stopped working, or diseases that most humans can't afford to treat. Antibiotic resistance alone kills around 700,000 people worldwide each year. Humanity desperately needs new, affordable, and effective medicines. Pregnant women, children, babies, all desperately need new, safe medication. But it's a tricky process to go through human testing. Would you want your healthy baby to be injected with an experimental drug? Probably not. But would you want a well-tested cure if your baby was sick? Of course. But you can't have one without the other. Possibly until now. The journey that a medicine must take in order to reach patients is an incredibly long, complicated, and risky one. And it involves testing drugs on animals in order to get an idea of the effects in humans. But there are at least two major problems with this. Firstly, and most importantly, it's not the most considerate thing to do. And secondly, animals are not humans. They have different genetics and biology and response to treatments. For example, the intestine of a dog is mar far more leakier than a human intestine. So they can get stuff faster from their guts and into their bloodstream. Good if you're a dog, not so good if you're a biopharmacist. So the best way to test new medicines is with humans. It's so much more reliable. But here's a problem. Humans are also different. We are all built in a slightly different way. The effects of a drug on a fit, healthy 20-year-old male might not be the same as the effect of the same drug on a fragile 70-year-old grandma. Moreover, sometimes human trials can go wrong. Test patients sometimes won't even respect the rules of the trials. I heard of study volunteers who got kicked out of paid trials for stashing snacks into the bathroom of the test center to supplement their standardized meals. Another study sent 3,600 volunteers to India, Guatemala, and Mexico to test this new vaccine patch against traveler's diarrhea. <laughs> Here, volunteers had to hand over their poop in case they had diarrhea. And the last thing you, have to do, you want to do if you have the runs is to catch it in a bag, transfer it to a lunchbox, add formaldehyde, and drive it to the nearest clinic. 
Is that the most tempting thing to do with your spare time? Unsurprisingly, many volunteers lied about their toilet dilemmas, and the pharmaceutical company didn't have the correct data to make the right decision about the drug. It was quite an expensive mistake to make, simply because people don't enjoy collecting their own poop and saving it for later. Who would have thought? <laughs> but it's sad to know that all the efforts and hard work put into developing a new vaccine can be ruined by an unsuccessful trial. And what most people don't realize is that the price of these unsuccessful trials gets rolled into the price of the drug when it finally hits the market. It's amazing to see just how crucial these clinical trials really are. The more we can test new drugs, the better we can predict how they will affect each and every one of us. But we're all different. We're all built in a slightly different way. But what if we could harness a lot of computing power to zoom in and simulate human biology and physiology in all its be beauty and intricate details. In the last decades, new and exciting technologies have uh, been developed, which allow taking drug testing to a virtual space, where scientists can use mathematical models to model the pathway that a drug will make into our bodies. So now, instead of testing a new drug on you, you, or you, I can give my computer drugs. And I hope I will never have to ask my computer to poop in a bag ever again. <laughs> What I'm currently working on is contributing to building the computational model for the gut. The gut, or intestine, is built of a tight barrier of cells which only lets specific drugs or nutrients get into our bloodstream. It's my job to figure out how a virtual gut might function when given drugs. So, I grow cells in the lab, the tissues in the lab, which mimic the intestine, and then I go and test how drugs with specific characteristics get absorbed through my lab-built tissue. This part is what I call the experimental way, or even better, the frustrating way. As many of you doing lab research knows that growing live tissues in the lab and experimenting on them takes an eternity. At the same time as working with my lab-built intestine, I use my computer to model the behavior of the same drugs on virtual humans with virtual intestines. A virtual intestine is built by harvesting all the knowledge that humanity has about the, the specific organ, the intestine physiology, and how it's structured information about different subcomponents and layers and processes happening at the uh, level of this organ. And then I compare if what I model on my computer fits with the experimental data I get on my lab-built intestine, and then with clinical data obtained in real humans. My virtual intestine has, helps me answer questions like, what is the preferred pathway of a specific drug? Does it go through the cells or in between the cells? Does it use any special molecules to help it along the way? And then, the beauty of this is that we can connect this virtual intestine with a bunch of other model organs designed in the same way. The organs are put together like pieces of a virtual puzzle to form a whole organism, a virtual human being. And then we go even further, and we model a whole population of humans, which reflects the variability between each individual. We can make a virtual grandma, a virtual athlete, a virtual baby, and even a virtual you. Imagine building up a virtual human which has the same age, weight, height, and health characteristics as yourself. A medically identical virtual twin. You could test a new treatment on your virtual doppelganger to get an idea what's the, if the right dosage that would be effective in you and won't harm you. It's a lot better to discover these negative effects inside a computer than inside 
a live human being, especially when things go wrong. My prediction for the future is that one day, patients like you will be able to build virtual versions of themselves, and precisely dose the amount of those that will cure them, while helping them avoid all those side effects, overdoses, or negative effects. So, are you curious how my virtual <laughs> intestine might look like? <laughs> In our models, we use the physiology and properties of the specific organ, in my case, the gut, the red part. And then we input the quantity and properties of the drug, and then we run a simulation to see how much drug is able to get into the bloodstream, which gives an indication of how efficient, effective is the drug, but also of any potential risk of overdosing. It might look mathematical, it might look geeky, but this is just a tiny part of the story of what happens inside your body every time you take a pill. And each of our bodies is different. Our bodies are different. It may look mathematical, but it's surprisingly human. Sometimes a little too human. <laughs> At some point, I even started giving names to my virtual patients. It's kind, kind of lonely sitting in my lab, in my office, giving drugs to my imaginary patients. Can get some bit attached to some of them. <laughs> but every now and then, I might have to kill them. Sometimes <laughs> on purpose, sometimes by accident. <laughs> but the good news is that every time a virtual patient dies, we can just reboot them. That's a feature that human patients really lack. The beauty of my simulations is that things can be undone and redone. There is more space for mistakes, and there is where I can thrive most as a scientist, because I can get creative without much risk, especially without risk on real humans. So now I'm going to leave you with a few examples of what one can do with these animal and human models. Firstly, in the, in the animal testing phase of drug trials, the first question is, what is the right dosage? So, a range of doses is given, sometimes extreme, to reach this sweet spot of efficacy. And this can have terrible effects to some animals. By using these computer simulations, we can predict where this sweet spot will be and reduce animal suffering in the lab. Secondly, we can predict if two or more drugs taken together, like a drug cocktail, can influence, it can influence each other. Many times they do. So it's awesome if we can predict this and adjust the dose of each drug given to the patient so both are equally effective and not toxic. And thirdly, we could create a virtual twin so we can see how these drug combinations can affect your body. If you ever wondered why a headache pill might work, might work, work well for you, but not for your friend, this approach could provide the answer. It might take decades before we'll be able to simulate every tiny aspect of human biology and physiology. But these technologies are aiming at zooming in to our biological features to the extent that we can create virtual models that can provide valuable predictions that can help mitigate the suffering of thousands of humans and animals. We can develop and test new drugs faster and safer than ever before. I'd love to live in a world where my computer simulation is so powerful and so reliable that we never have to test drugs on human subjects ever again. And this is why I can proudly say my computer is on drugs. Thank you. <laughs> Reina. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs>